Well, it's 8 p.m. on a Wednesday. Uh, good evening, the good people of YouTube. Thanks for joining us. I can't, I can't believe they've uh, they want us back. I don't think they've got much choice, mate. To be honest. <laughs> That's fair enough. Yeah, it's fair enough. Hold on, I've got you playing. Hold on. Okay, I'm back in. I'm back in. Back in the room. Yeah, hope everyone's well and, um, you know, didn't go out and if you're in the UK, didn't go out and smash it on Saturday night. Or if you did, uh, hopefully you're not feeling the side effects of you know, the other side <laughs> of what it could be, you know. Um, did you go out, did, did you go out uh, Saturday night? Nope. Nope, not no? at all. I have, I have not yet... Party's hard, like my life depends on it. I haven't done any of that sort of stuff. <laughs> I, I still had a beer at home, um, and that's it. My wife was working. Jane can now go back to work. So now I'm right. le- quite literally left holding the kids on a Saturday and a... Um, what other day? Wednesday. Today, isn't it? I've lost, <laughs> lost the plot, lost the track. Um <laughs> And all that sort of stuff. Well, there's two people watching us, mate. So we can't. We're not. Just no, there's not. There's thirteen. There's wow, thirteen there people really? watching. So hi guys, as everyone. Lefty, lefty Mike. How you doing, Lefty Mike? I take it you're Lefty Mike because you're left-handed. Who's this? Andy Ground. I didn't. I'm from Leicester. <laughs> <laughs> oh mate, what a downer. <laughs> Sorry, Andy. Oh, so so just in case we have we have some um, people from other countries. Leicester is still on lockdown. Are you still on lockdown, Andy? I think they're still on lockdown, aren't they? They are. Uh, Melbourne apparently has just gone back into lockdown because things have all got a bit, um, co- really? bit COVIDy. Um. Damn. All right, guys. Oh, we got. Oh, we got a few people watching now. Nice. Hi, guys. I skip. Hi, Fernando and Bruce. In Can- Fernando's in Canada. Thanks for joining us. Um, yeah. Well, I didn't well Andy, our, just think our reach was so on. great. <laughs> Right, so um, what we're doing today, we're doing a a, a Katana special today. So don't, you know, don't think that, um, don't think that you've only got to ask Katana questions. Any questions are absolutely fine. Um, But, you know, the, the, the highlight today will highlight. Is is, uh, is the feature? The, so the feature. Surely. The feature. That's a better word. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I woke up like before five this morning, so my brain is um, still isn't working. So, any katana questions you want to throw at us? I can start with one actually because um, there was uh, we had a pre question in, and and James actually it'd be good to get both of our views on this okay. or answers on this. Um, someone said, "What's the difference between a compressor and a limiter?" Ooh. Do you want to answer that? Oh, okay. Now, let me just, okay, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, why don't du- you answer that? Let me that get my ducks in a row. Hang on, I just need to make sure I'm, I'm getting this right. Um, this is where I'd love to have a whiteboard and be able to do, like, you know, I can remember all the the really good examples that my tutors gave at college of how, you know, comparisons uh, between signal-to-noise ratio and, and waterfalls and all that sort of stuff. It was quite clever. But, okay, so my understanding of a compressor is that a compressor... I'm trying to, I'm trying to, trying to put this into some kind of um, accurate English, <laughs> not not just me going... Um, Shall I do my one first? Yes, you, Shall I you do go my... first, yes. How about how about if I answer it from you can do it I mean we're both studio guys but James can answer from a studio point of view and I'll answer from a guitar pedal point of view how's that Yeah that sounds good yeah Okay so okay a compressor I mean this is going to be it's going to be more or less the same sort of answer but a compressor is normally at a lower ratio um, at a lower ratio so meaning that a compressor what would you say a, comp- a compression goes up to 4 to 1 8 to 1 Twelve to one, yeah, t- ten to one. For, I'd, I'd probably get push as far as ten to one for kick drum if I really wanted to get a splat sound, but no more than that. Okay, and and the limiter normally starts at about twenty to one. Now, what that means is, imagine that I play guitar. Okay, now that signal is doing that. Okay, now imagine that there's a threshold that that signal, when it comes up, it hits a certain point. Now, at at a certain point with a compressor, it's it's like a soft. There's a softer ceiling if you want. I'm trying to make this into a simple in a simple answer. And then with a limiter, it's a harder ceiling. So if you think a limiter is going to flatten off the peak and bring it down while a compressor is going to sort of round off the peak. Is that a good way of explaining it, James? I think 
that I think of a limiter as yeah. the signal gets to the threshold, yeah. the, the point at which the limiter starts to react, and goes no further. Oh, that's, that's a brick wall limiter. Yes. But a compressor at the point of at the the point of actuation, <coughs> the threshold, if you will, you can actually get it to push back down. As opposed to a limiter which gets to a limit to a point oh, and will go no further. So so that, that's that's a really good explanation. Shall I just um shall I go onto my katana? screen and then we'll play the difference how's that that sounds like a great that, plan that you, sounds you do that i'll idea. i'll do this and this thing here okay so let's do this let's let's go over to the katana app right okay let's oh, go there, into... there was there was me that was scary for a minute <laughs> <laughs> so let's go into i'm um, going to my mod slot which is where i've got the compressor now um the thing about the katana it's sort of the controls are very guitar pedal like so it says sustain and sustain would be threshold and ratio in one so if you listen to the note let's switch off the compressor uh, the compressor first of all and listen to the notes okay now if i if i put in the compressor now a guitar compressor is actually it is actually quite limiting so it has got like a limiter sort of sound to it let me switch in the limiter now if you see with the limiter we've actually got a ratio here now let me turn that up to let's turn it up to infinity to one so it sounds like this so i don't know if it's coming across on youtube but it's it's much more squashed let me put it back to the compressor because i tend to go for compressors over over limiters. James, are there any other questions, Im? Uh, I'm just having a quick look. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Thanks for addressing this question. Um, there's a, a few others to do with directly catenary type stuff. Um, yeah, okay, let's do it. It says, hang on a sec, I'm just, you've caught me on the hop a little bit because I'm... Okay, I'm well, sh well, shall I do it? Because I've, um, I've got them up. So, yeah, I, big I, fan, guys. Have you got that? I, do you miss it? You do it, you do it, you do it. Okay, okay, big fan guys. Got my Mark II 100 1x12. Great, that's what I've got. A couple of months ago, usually mic my tube amp to PA. Just wondering, would you recommend the line out direct to the PA and what is the best cable to use? Oh, that's really interesting. So I've done both. Uh, personally, it does sound better if you mic it up. So I really would recommend you micing it up. The Katana sounds great if you use a USB because uh, the Katana out, of the usb has you can use like the stereo effects so like the stereo delays and the stereo reverbs so it's really worth it if you're using the usb but if you if 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 you're doing a gig with the katana mic it up always a better is sound is the i'm assuming it's a line out or a di out on the back it's a line out but you can switch it between there's three different settings you've got a uh, you've got a live mm -hmm. yeah the, the wording's not great to be honest you've got a live which is um a it sounds more like a di it isn't quite a di sort of fizzy sound out yeah. you've got a recording out which has a sort of a um, speaker simulator type yeah. type sound on it which actually is, is quite good and you get a mix or blend i can't remember what it's called which is both of them blended together i don't what? know why why yeah <laughs> i don't know i don't know but um yeah but there, but there isn't okay but there is a speaker simulator there is amp emulation in there yeah yeah it's yeah, just yeah, not absolutely. as good as sticking a microphone in front of it because let's face it it just isn't well, the, the sound of it, what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to play, I've mic'd up the, the Katana tonight. Um, I would normally go, if, if, if I was doing something like this and we didn't have the complications of James being in a completely different studio, I, I would have used the USB, but the Katana is mic'd up at the moment and it sounds like this. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to mute my vocal microphone so you can hear the, the sound of the Katana. Hopefully that came through. Very much so. 
yes. <laughs> is it quite loud? It, is it it's loud? Quite, no, loud is good. You're a guitar player. It's loud. <laughs> okay, let's do a next question. Um, do you think that IR loader attenuators such as the Two Notes Captor X would work well with the Katana Mark II head? Oh, I don't know. Never tried that. They normally, it's funny that these attenuators, because they always advertise these attenuators, they always say they're a valve amp attenuator. Or a valve amp, you know, they always say that, you know, plug your valve amp into it. Now, because it's it's um, it's not valves in that, I don't know. I'd love to try it out. Surely an amp attenuator is an amp attenuator, isn't it? Yeah, it should, yeah, it should work absolutely fine. The only thing is effects and stuff. I can't. No, I think it would sound great. I think it's worth trying. I definitely would try and go to your local music shop or speak to your local music shop and see if they'll lend you one so you can try it out. Or but, go, yeah, the go to one of the better guitar shops that have got demo space, like Guitar Guitar or Anderton's uh, yeah, or any of those sort of places shop. that have got proper demo suites. Do you know what? I, I nearly put my hands in my pocket for a new guitar today. Did you? What yeah. are you going to get? Well... It was only when I saw the price it put me off, and this is going to make me sound such a guitar snob. Go on. But the Matt Bellamy Manson guitar, oh. and I thought, yeah, I, I saw guitar guitar I was doing. It. I liked the look of that, and then I found out how much they were, and I thought it's going to be a dog <laughs> because it was no, like no, I mean, it was five hundred and fifty quid, and it's the same sort of price as an Epiphone Sheraton or, or yeah. an Epiphone Les Paul, and I was like, it's going to be rough. <laughs> that's what that's what you get for Chinese made. The thing is, like he, so Matt Bell, Matt Bellamy, the guitarist singer from from Muse, owns what's the name of the guitar? Manson's? Manson, Manson's, yeah, Manson Guitars down in Ex Cornwall, is it? Uh, Ex Cornwall, Exeter, that way, Devon, he, yeah, Devon sort of way, and um, yeah, so now he owns that shop, and you know, if you go and buy one of his guitars, I think they're probably about two and a half grand, I'd say, if you go and get that, you know, one of the English made ones, but yeah, now they're making them in China, so. I think Court are doing them, aren't they? I was about to say it's the Court factory that's doing them. Yeah, but I yeah, thought yeah. I thought I, I quite fancy that, but uh, then I, was, I, I, you know, if it had been a grand, thirteen hundred, I might I might have gone, yeah, all right, I'll have some of that. But yeah. and, unless you're very lucky, that's that's not to say that all five hundred pound guitars are, are bad. Yeah, but you've got to be more lucky to get a good one. I've played some I think great uh, Squire Strats. Believe it or not, I've played yeah. some Squire Strats that are better than US custom shop Strats. Just because right. the, the stars have aligned and I've gone, oh, this is nice. And yet I've still not bought them because I'm a guitar snob. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm, I'm so with you on that. But I do think Chinese guitars are better now. They're much better than when we were, you know, when we were starting out. And next question. OK, I, I think uh, Dintsa Ints, I think I've pronounced that probably completely wrong um he said but doesn't distortion do the same make the signal a square wave then what is the point of a guitar pedal chain no um distortion is very different to compression um i can't explain it but it is <laughs> okay so distortion adds harmonics effectively what, what you're doing is you're taking imagine a sine wave as as the open string which let's face it that's what a string is yeah imagine then adding distortion is not Yes, it does eventually down the road have an effect on the 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 volume of a sound, which because it yeah. just does. But what you're actually doing is adding harmonics. Um, yeah. And if you've got a valve, it's adding third. Oh yeah. Third degree harmonics, third, the third partial. And if it's solid state, it's adding the second second harmonics, third harmonics, something like that. I can't remember the exact because I'm kind of on the spot, but. Um, it yeah, it's not compression. It does have the effect of compressing the sound, but that's purely because you're adding more and more harmonics to get a richer signal, which is what distortion is. It's adding harmonics. Uh, let me see. Uh, doesn't okay. Oh, Brent March. Hello from Newcastle. Big fan. Why <laughs> why a the lads? Brent. Why a? All right, Brenty boy. How you doing, mate? Um, okay, Paul Cell. Will an expression pedal work plugged directly into the back of my Mark II 50 watt, or do I need to use it via a foot switch? Um, depends what you mean in the back of your Mark II. It depends what you mean in the back of. Do you mean like in the effects loop, or do you mean because it won't work there? Uh, or do you mean. Is there an expression port on it? 
I'm assuming there is. Yes, yeah, there are. Yeah, 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 yeah. There, there, yeah, there's an expression port. So yes, if you're if you're going to plug into the expression port, you need to assign it in the uh, Tone Studio app, which I've done videos of. If you want to go and have a look at the video, uh, it was how to assign an expression pedal, something like that. Um, but yes, you can. I think in that video I actually did that. So expression into the the back of the katana works absolutely and you also because i remember watching it you also explain the variations of the begins with m the expression pedals you use oh mission mission pedals yeah the different the different variations mission engineering yeah 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 because yeah, yeah. yeah. you can get one that says only works with um oh god what's, what's the um white pedals white um Stomp boxes, really nice. Delays White and ones. loveliness. Um, oh god, what's the brand? Come on, brain. I can't think. Anyway, but, but, the, the, think. but they do. M Mission make specific pedals for specific jobs with specific they gear. Do. Um, I think it's down do. to the 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 um, either log or linear parts on the the arm and stuff like that it's all, all yeah. a bit different but it, but you know it is quite important to get the right one for the right thing so yeah. it seems you, you've, you've done all right to get the, uh, to have the right one for the right thing yeah yeah uh, here james this is a question for you yes the amp out is great so that's the di out of the back of the amp sounds mm -hmm. great um what's the difference between a di box or just a balanced cable okay so if the if the unit has an XLR out, yeah. it will be a balanced output. So, for example, many modern bass amps now, bass heads and bass kind of combos, will have a dedicated DI output. Now, to not go too far down a rabbit hole, because this could well. be a huge rabbit hole in its own right, <laughs> um, a balanced signal is three cables three connections um a hot cold and a ground or a plus or minus on a ground uh if it's a three pole jack what we might refer to as a stereo jack tip ring sleeve where the where the, where the phrase trs comes from um you can have balanced jacks you can most is the outputs though is, are not yeah. balanced they'll be they'll be unbalanced which yeah. generally means they have a higher impedance, which right. means it affects the signal. Generally, high impedance into uh, PAs and mixers, things like that, is bad. Um, yes. Keyboard players can get away with it. If, if the keyboard is here and the PA is here, you don't get the signal drop over long, over long cables because obviously you don't need a long cable. But guitar, because it's a much lower impedance that's right isn't it higher no impedance. higher much much higher impedance that's yeah. why you get things like signal drop so the idea of a di box is it takes a un, an unbalanced signal high impedance and converts it into a balanced signal low impedance hence you can have much longer signal runs much longer cable runs um if you're on stage Keyboards should always go through a DI box and then into the desk. They should never go into the line input. The only thing that should ever go into line inputs is things like CD players and, and backing tracks, anything like that. But, um, yeah, DI boxes and, and balanced and unbalanced is somewhere that I'm not ready to go because I'd, I'd want to get to it. I'd want to explain it properly. But to, just to accept that an unbalanced signal, a plus and a minus or a plus and a ground, you get the signal and you get the earth. On a DI box or a balanced signal, you have the in phase signal, the plus, the outer phase signal, the minus, and the ground. The theory being, if any distortion or interference gets into one, it gets into the other, and at either end, it's cancelled out and you have a lovely clean signal. Okay, lovely jubblies. God, that's a bit you wish you didn't ask. That. That's a technical. Uh, that's a technical answer. Sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, no, it's great, mate. Uh, hey guys, since I'm a bedroom guitar player, I've not had the luxury to check out too many amps. But does the feel of a guitar change when you're shifting from a digital versus solid state versus tube? Yes, 
I think so. Definitely. Definitely. Definitely, yeah. Um, Definitely. There are things that get talk, talked about by AMP players. And by that, I mean sort of Valve AMP players. Things like AMP SAG and Speaker Cry and um, Tone Breakup and all that sort of stuff. That generally, when a, when someone, a modelling company, says they've modelled it, they've usually tried too hard. Just putting it out there. Um, I think, uh, you know, but the difference between a solid state amp and a and a valve amp is massive. It's mainly tonal, feel-wise. Yeah, you, you, you can, I, I think you can, you get more expression out of a valve amp, I think. You get yeah. more emotion passion call it what you will whereas Dynamics and stuff. yeah where a solid state amp is great reliable um do you remember i actually found one on- online the other day i was i was very tempted to buy it because at the time i was very impressed with it do you remember the marshall mode 4 oh yeah it, yeah i was i was <laughs> at the time i was very very impressed with it and i, I think i got some really, oh, really good noises out of it and i i thought do you know what i wonder if that's worth it and i thought nah no, no, don't do it. You haven't heard of them for years. There's a reason for that. Um, yeah. Versus amp sims. I mean, amp sims are doing a really good job of getting close, and they're getting yeah. closer. Paul, you that um, neural DSP one you tried the other day, and I saw uh, that there's a new neural one out as well, like a clean Fendery style style yeah, amp that I, yeah, that I yeah, heard yeah. about today. Um, Andy from oh Genelex. Um, showing off and I was like that sounds nice um, yeah it, it's just different it is different I mean the, the purist the purist in me says valve amp all the time the realist says a valve amp for your lead for your lead sound the one that's up front and in your face and everything else can go through modeling yeah I, I think it's more of a feel it is it's, it's more of like when you're playing into a, a let's say a modeler let's not let's ignore the katana for, for a minute yeah but when you're playing into a modeler and that can be software i mean that's it is software anyway but yeah. that can be sort of you know a model on your computer there's a certain amount of latency now as a guitar player because we are so used to this immediacy um, immediacy when we play something um, so you know when you're playing through some of those old modelers there is a tiny amount of late, uh, uh, latency which means the the time that it takes for you to play that note for it to come back at you now a lot of these digital modeling manufacturers say well yes but this is no different to running a 20 foot cable in, into a you know in into a valve amp it is different and it sounds different all that is just marketing bs to be honest so, so yes, it does feel different, but it doesn't mean it's any worse or better. I think valve amps do sound great, and I would always choose a valve amp over a solid state amp over a modeling amp. But, you know, the Katana sounds and feels great. The great thing about the Katana is when you play it, it's immediate. I don't know how they've done that, but it is, and it sounds great. I think we answered, because that was a long answer, wasn't it? It was. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's have a look. Um, but that's what they said. Balance coming in mono, awesome tone. When using foot pedal connected to the GAFC foot switch into a katana, what is the difference between selecting volume or foot volume on BTS? That's a katana one. That's definitely you. <laughs> Do you know what, Fernando? I don't know. I don't know that one. Can I? Can I have a look? I'm, uh, um, I'm going to need to look at that and do some research because I've never seen that that foot volume thing, but. I'm sure it's there. So let me do a bit of research and I'll get back to you on that if that's all right. Um, I had the two note, uh, I had the two note box and didn't like it at all. That, that, that was Skip that said that. Now I've got the two notes torpedo studio. That is amazing. Um, I haven't tried the Captor X yet, but uh, yeah, I'd like to try that. Okay. I'm sure I can get you one. Yes, please. Yeah, that'd be nice. Um, okay. Uh, Robert says, Paul, loving your work. What? Thank you very much. What do you think is the most versatile setting on the, on the cat? If so, could you simply dial in one patch to cover mo- most situations? What would it be? Yes. Okay. Let's do that. Let's do that. So, uh, by the way, guys, not trying to do a, a self plug here, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but here comes a self plug. <laughs> but here comes a self plug. I've literally just done a 
um, a preset pack a couple of videos ago. Have a look on our web on, on our YouTube channel. I'll go through all the patches. But um, yeah, I've done a preset pack. So if you know if you want some tones that I think are very versatile tones that will get you through any situation, go and have a look at them. They're on our website if you want to go on our website. Do you which like is... me? Believe. Sorry to butt in there before no, you, right. before cool. you plug the website. Yeah. Um, do yeah, you, like cool. me, believe you can get through any guitar gig with six patches? Uh, yeah, four, I reckon. Yeah, four. I re well, I was going to go... A function. Let's say a, fun a function, fun shall we? A function. I, I reckon I can get through yeah. with six patches, and I'll tell you what they are. Clean. Clean boost. Yeah. <laughs> We just put a boost pedal in. Yeah, well, uh, uh, like I say, but but you know, if you have, if you if you've got the option and you, and you you want to just have a MIDI foot switch or something like that, clean clean boost for for solos. Yeah, yeah. A kind of plexi esque, and a, and yeah. a boost. Yeah. And a filth and a boost. There's my six patches. Pretty much, I reckon you're right there. I reckon you're right. I mean, yes, I I was going. So if 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 I do a gig and I'm using something like a katana, I would I'd have patch number one would be my clean sound. Patch two would be a drive sound, slightly, you know, slightly overdriven. Patch three would be a lead sound. So I could definitely do a gig with three. Mm -hmm. And patch four would be a more ambient sort of clean sound. Yep. Something like that. You can get through any gig with that sort of stuff. Right. So the best thing about the Boss Katana. Oh, let, let me switch on my yep. let me switch on my, my screen, shall I? Let me then I'll do I'll drive this end. There we go. Okay, so I've covered this in many videos. The best channel in the Boss Katana is the clean channel. Now, if you've got a Boss Katana Mark II, you've got the variation button up here. So you can click on that and it goes red. That puts it to the second variation. So that is the new clean model that they've that they've created. I don't know what the different, you know, what the actual models are that they've created, but it sounds slightly different. Um, if you want to get your gain, if, if if you want a more overdriven sound, just add a pedal in the booster. It's definitely the best way. It sounds the best. I've gone through all of the different channels. And to, to me, the lead and the brown channels, sorry if anyone disagrees with me. This this is my opinion. This is not, you know, this isn't... It's not gospel, you know, it doesn't but... Necessarily mean, it's definitely not gospel. No, it's definitely not. But um, they seem more gimmicky sort of channels to me. Um, especially the brown channel. It's I don't get it at all. To me, it doesn't sound like the... I'm guessing the brown channel is supposed to emulate the Eddie Van Halen brown sort of sound. I don't get it really. Okay, so I'm in a clean channel. Let's switch off the booster. And my my boss uh, my boss tone studio has just frozen on me. It does this occasionally, I think, because I've just updated my OS software. Here we go. Right. Okay. So here's my clean sound. Okay, so pretty sparkly and clean. Okay, if I had a booster, let's add the blues drive in. Let's bring it back to about, what's it, about 30. Okay, we're getting slightly on the edge of breakup. Let's turn it up a little bit more. It's driving. Now this is a blues drive. This isn't even like a high gain thing. And well, let's just crank it up to full. Proper eighties metal, and there's nothing wrong glam with rock. there's nothing wrong with some of that. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> so, to me, there's one patch. There's your clean sound. If you got if you've got something like the uh, the GAFC foot controller. You can switch all this on. There's your clean sound. There's your dirty sound. Now all your other effects are just adding on top of that. I'd always recommend in the mod slot, and I've, I've said this in other videos, um, add a compressor into the mod slot. Works a treat. But make sure you get your balances right. So for instance, if, if I'm, and I'm hoping I've done this correctly, there's my clean sound. If I switch off the compressor, it's, it's more or less the same volume. What you don't want to do is to then drive into the compressor or drive the compressor harder into the front of the amp. To me, it doesn't work. Okay, so there's the compressor. Effect slot, have anything you want. Univibe. Add a boost with that. 
You know, it's full on Hendrix. And then you've got your delays and your reverbs. Jobs are good. Un. It's actually quite straightforward, isn't it? As, as software it's really straightforward. emulations go. I mean, it, it reminds me of, and I will always go back to this because I still think it's the, it's the best of the units. Um, yeah. It reminds me of the 11 rack because the 11 rack is so instant to get in and dig into. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's so simple. And that's why this amp is, I mean, not only is it priced really well, and that is why it's the most popular amp in the world and the biggest selling amp in the world. It sounds great and it's simple to use. I mean, I'd, I'd really recommend anyone to, to get, you know, to use the, the Tone Studio because it just opens up the whole amp and it's, you know, you've got it all in front of you. You can see what you're doing and you can, you know, program your patches in there and then switch off the computer and all the patches are then stored inside the katana take it away with you and you've got your sounds um jobs are good man. dave arch or as we know him davage um so white, davage. Mul white multi effects processor is probably the eventide h9 and that's exactly the one i was thinking of dave so oh, thank you for, okay. for saving my brain um yes so we yeah can, that's a nice unit it's a very nice unit and i don't know anyone at yeah. eventide or eventide depending on don't you i don't know Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, I'll, I'll work on okay. that. Okay. Oh wow, we've got loads of yes, we've got loads we have. of questions. Loads of stuff coming. Sorry, in. we've got loads of. Um, did you did, expression work plug direct into the back? Okay, I, I'm a bit lost. Foot pedal connected to JFC. Uh, didn't like at all. Line outs. Excuse me, guys. So I'm going. I'm going to get through this quick. Yeah. Okay. Ciao, Paul. Best advice. Tweak home patch. To the lines. Yeah, yep. excellent. Thank you. Hi, guys. Hi, Daniel. How are you doing? Huge fan. Live by the ultimate tone. <laughs> what telly do you play and what pickups are in it? Okay, I've got three different tellies. I've got two in the studio and I've got oh, one down here, in the house. Here we, here we go. Here we go. This one is not actually a telly. It's an Esquire. It's an Esquire now, that you have modded with extra pickups. <laughs> well, no, yeah. So, yes, I use... I've got three... And, and I don't mean to be like, I've got three custom shop guitars, but I love the Fender custom shop guitars. And this is my job. So I tend to, you know, if, you know, it's like a, anything. It's like a workman. A workman's going to buy good good tools. I want to, you know, I want I want a nice guitar. So th this is a Fender custom shop Esquire. So the Esquire comes with, I think I've done this before. I'm getting deja vu. One pickup, which is the, brig, uh, the bridge pickup. And it sounds amazing. Because there's no other pickups normally in the Esquire, there's no other magnetic field to spoil what's going on in this pickup. They sound monster. Um, but I decided to put a... <laughs> Ruin the magnetic field. <laughs> no, 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 because they're already routed out. All, right. all Esquires are routed out. Oh, really? So it's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right, okay. So, yeah, so, so you know, if I ever wanted to sell it, which I never would, um, you just take this pickup, uh, the, the, the scratch plate off and the pickup out, put the old... Uh, scratch plate back on it does look really cool in Esquire and um, yeah and that's it jobs are good one. but the Esquire I mean the custom shop guitars are just so good because the weight of it is nothing and the resonance they always pick all the best wood I really recommend if you've got like a bunch of guitars and you want one great guitar sell those guitars and go and get a Fender custom shop try it out first obviously but they're just they're just so good but but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna defend the the other end of the market if if you will. I was at a well known guitar shop in California. Yeah. And I went in and said, I want to buy a jazz bass, a Fender Jazz. And he said, How much you got? I said, Doesn't matter. Which is not something I say very often, but at the time the exchange rate was very much in our favour. Um it's not <laughs> as good these days. Um and I said, I, 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 you know, what have you got? He said, well, we've got probably got about 25 jazzes. I said, line them up and I'll try them. I'm not the world's greatest bass player by any stretch. You know, I, you're a good bass player. But I, I, can, you're a good bass I can play player. bass. You're better, you're better than me. Oh, yeah. thank you very much. Um, I can play bass. I, I know my way around the fretboard. Um, and I must have tried 15, 20 different jazzes, everything from a squire, a Mexican, or whatever, yada, yada, yada. And all the way up to the custom shops with all the deluxe push pulls and everything and all the goodies and extras and I said I don't really want that I want when someone says when someone comes into the studio and says oh I love a jazz bass I want that sound I don't need mm -hmm. every sound because I want a jazz and then I want I'll, eventually I'll buy a P bass and then I'll buy a um, a music mat a stingray and then I'll buy a few others in, in time 
and I tried, say, everything, and the best, the best bass that they had in there, by a long, long way, for even tone and for wood and just for the sustain and everything, was the Mexican jazz bass yeah, yeah. that I bought. And, and it's a stunning bass. I mean, it was still uh, $600, 600 bucks at the time. Which you know, it's a reasonable, f- yeah. yeah, reasonable for you know. But, for but instrument. at the time for us, it was very, very good because that, that translated to about three hundred quid. Oh, they were the days. Those were they? the days. Um, my sixtieth anniversary telly that I got as well was on the same sort of. It was a year later, or a year earlier. I can't remember which way I did it, but it was an amazing deal. I think I think it was twelve hundred bucks, and I, it was about yeah. six hundred quid once it got home, nice. and and I paid duty on it, of course. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm not sure you should be saying that on. Probably, uh, <laughs> probably not. It was it was over <laughs> it was over six years ago. That, that, you know, it was over six years ago. I'm safe. Yeah. Okay. As long as, as long as no one works for HMRC on, on, on watching us, I'm Let's fine. Hope not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, next question. Uh, Bruce Bruce Brook said we might all have to chip in and buy Paul a new watch. What have I done to my watch? Did I did I did I bang it on something? I don't know what. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't I'm hear. sure I did something. I'm sure I did something. Or stupid. is it the fact? Is it a, is it an iWatch, Apple Watch, whatever they're called? Or is it yeah. actually a Casio from 1983? <laughs> <laughs> it's all trendy that is now, mate. I know. Okay. Um, Louis Santiago says purchasing a Mark II 100 2x12, nice, with a foot switch. Was also thinking of buying a GT1 or a GT1000 to add. Would that be a waste of money considering the GT is just another modeler? Um, yes. I think so. You think it would be? Yeah. I think you think it would. it'd be? You think it'd be a waste? Yeah. I I heard something the other day. There's there's another YouTuber called he's a Greek guy and uh, Jack. Go on, murder you somebody else's n- name. <laughs> yeah, I've just done it now. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, and and we've sent emails to each other as well. And he's great. He's great. And and I heard some of his patches, and I thought they were really good. He was using the GT1000. I thought it sounded fantastic. Um. Yeah. Very different. Probably. You know, the, the amp mod is it is going to be different. It's going to have. Uh, more probably more processing than the katana it's going to have things like shimmer verbs um, you know more interesting effects the katana is is like your basic nuts and bolts boss pedals it's a gigas machine isn't it it's a gigas dream it's a gigas machine exactly yeah exactly Uh, uh, which is Uh, why you've got a wall of pedals next to you when you want to get creative in the studio exactly exactly um the the box yes, I, the box Vit. I'm still thinking Sorry, about the, the 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 unit I'm still thinking about buying is that um, head rush I was really oh, yeah, I was really one. impressed by that at Nam we tried it yes yeah, so, um, has anyone tried a head rush I liked Not it that I liked it uh, Jess Fitz says I have a Boss Mark One and a Boss Me Three and I think it's a perfect combination yeah excellent I mean you can get anything you want out of the Katana it's great it's such it's such a versatile amp mm. the thing is if the Katana was a thousand pounds I'd be talking about it differently. You know, it's, it sounds like that sort of amp, but it's, you know, it's, it's a, for the price of it, it's amazing. Um, I think Fernando means difference between foot pedal and volume knob on amp. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Um, volume knob on amp or volume knob on guitar. Now there's another rabbit hole to dive down. That's another rabbit hole. <laughs> but the yes, on the with, with the expression pedal... Uh, it, it depends on where you put the volume inside the amplifier. For instance, if you have your expression pedal acting as a volume in front of the preamp, it's going to sound very different because it's going to reduce the amount of gain that's coming from the guitar into the amp, so it's going to clean it up. If you have it coming before the effects, you can still have the delay and your reverb trails after. I'd have to do a video on this. Mm. And if then you have you have it at the output stage, it's a it's it's like your master volume turns everything up and down. So it all depends on you know whereabouts in the chain it is. Um, yes, okay. So so Skip said yes, it was a capture, the cap the capture X, and he didn't like it. Interesting. Mm. Um, so what is the best way to g- go? On. Sorry, there is a, there's a. I remember asking this question to the man in question when I met him. Clang. Oh yeah. Um, here we go. There's a Steve Vai track, uh, the last track on Alien Love Secrets, which is not his biggest you album. You met Steve Vai? I've met Steve Vai. You met yeah. Steve Vai? Oh, yeah. nice. I've uh, met Steve Vai. Uh, Nam a couple of years ago. Um, 
Uh, the last track's called Tender Surrender, and it's got this lovely right. sort of octave. Oh, okay, yeah, like, like, his, like his, um, he sort of he does his... Yeah, that kind of... It's, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And the last time around this pattern, it comes out of this absolute filthy distortion, and through that pattern... Ba, 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 da, ba. It goes from super distortion through to clean, and it's just beautiful. And I was like, "How on earth did you do that? How you know?" At the time, I was I, I didn't know how they achieved that. And it's just it's just the expression pedal going between two channels, ah, going, be, going between super clean and super dirty, rather than try, yes. trying to get the gain set or anything like that. It was just a, 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 an expression between two channels. I was like, "That's yeah, so brilliant." Cool. And you could do. I mean, how old is that album? Oh, uh, didn't mean to do the Pretty horse. Old, yeah. I didn't mean to do the horse impression then. Uh, let me have a quick look. I've, <laughs> I've, uh, 95. 95? Yeah. I don't know what he was using then. Uh, I honestly don't know what he was using. It was probably carving back then. Was it the legacy stuff back then? It carving, yeah, but how was he doing the effects and stuff? Might just, might yeah, just interesting. Been a, might have just been a, 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 like yeah, a, could, a pedal just yeah. doing it between two amps. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. A, a fade between two it? amps. Yeah, yeah. It sounded great though. I mean, you know, Steve Vai, he's got amazing tone. Whether you like whether you like that sort of stuff or not, you have to look yeah. at it and go, it's just sonically amazing. Oh, and innovative as well. Just mm. yeah, he's fantastic. It's, yeah, there's no doubt about that. Um Harish Pamu, excuse me if I'm murdering names here, guys. Um he says, What's the best way to get a good sounding high gain tone with the cat? put heavy pedals in a clean channel or put light distortion on a lead brown channel. For me personally, I've just sort of demonstrated that just in case you just come in. Um, uh, clean channel, get your pedals working. Get the actual pedal emulations working on the clean channel. It sounds much better to me, to my ears, much better. And there's, um, also, there's also an element of, you know, in the real world, I would yep. always want to find an amp that, ha that sounded fantastic on one channel you know my my chandler for a for example it is yeah, a yeah. it's a boutique hand wired lovely lovely amp but it sounds great because it hasn't got all those whistles and bells find a great sounding single channel and then mess around with it it, it it's better for your brain as well you know do do what you do in real life put the pedals in the chain don't think right i've got six different channels it sound like a bogner where you've got so many different options and switching and yeah too confusing don't get me wrong i would love a bogner anybody out there who wants to send me one that's fine <laughs> paul can keep his coffee i'll have a bogner or actually a soldana slo 100 if is the one i'm after at the moment coffee paul can keep his coffee you know the whole buy me a coffee thing Oh, okay. yeah, you can keep your coffee. I'll have. A, I'll have a. Yeah, buy me a coffee. I'd love a coffee. <laughs> um, I've had a coffee for a, for a little bit. I'll buy you a coffee when I see you on Friday. Thanks, mate. Nice one. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I think James is right. Yeah, sort of. It, yeah, valve amps with individual sounds like single channel valve amps do sound great. I don't, I've got. I think the only one with multiple. Oh no, I've got two multiple channels over here, the boogie and the synergy, but the, that divided by thirteen is just. Just sounds incredible, That's but the synergy is different. It is different though because it's. I don't consider that a multi-channel amp. I consider that right. a multi-amp amp. Does that make sense? Yeah, d yeah, definitely. Especially if you get the bigger one, we can you can have two different preamp slots. I, I must admit, I looked online the other day and went, I'm tempted because I I'd love yeah. to get because you know the modules are about five hundred bucks, four hundred bucks. <laughs> Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're, yeah, about three hundred, three hundred and seventy pounds or something. Yeah, I was very considering. Impressed. You know, that's the price of an expensive guitar pedal. Yeah, switch or, out preamps. Or a great. cheap five hundred really series box. Exactly. Yeah, look very much like the connectors look very much like a mm. five hundred series. Yeah. Um, yes, Dave. Yes, you're right. Yes, yeah. James answered that about the yes, the Eventide H9. Yes, you're right. Hi, Matt. How you doing? Um, hi, both. Have you found the UAD guitar plugins have a better feel? and tone in Luna. I yes. don't know why, but it feels with, do you know, me and James, as soon as we got Luna, that's the first thing that we said. Yeah. It's, it's night and day difference. I, I mean, anything in Luna sounds, sounds great, but yeah, James, yeah, yeah go on, you, you tell him. I, I, I will. <laughs> um, <laughs> you do that. We, we, we separately came to this, this con conclusion, didn't we? Because I remember you, I mean, me saying, 
Um, UA won't mind me saying this. I'm, I'm wearing one of their t-shirts. We're all said and done. Um, are, I've always had a problem with the Fender Tweed Deluxe. Yeah, amp. me too. I me could, too. I cannot get it clean. It always wants to break up in anything other than Luna. In Luna, yeah. it sounds like it's supposed to sound. Now, UA, I say I've got friends who've, who've paid for for this this um, amp plug-in, complained to UA and said, bitterly, this is not how it should sound. This is not how it should work. Completely. And, you know, and, and it doesn't sound great. It sounds amazing in Luna. That it's weird, isn't it? It, it, it? it is weird. And, you know, when people say every all DAWs sound the same, that used to be the case. Yeah. Luna sounds different. Even without, because, yeah. even without the tape emulation and the, and the Neve summing and all that sort of stuff, Luna sounds different. Interesting. I, I haven't tried it actually without, I haven't compared it without, but I think definitely with. But, it, but yeah, we should do a, we should do a little, little video on that actually to actually Well, we've compare. kind of got a little kind of summing type thing planned, haven't we? Uh, but, uh, on fr- but, yeah, on Friday there's, hopefully hopefully we can get this video out on Friday. But Matt, you might like it because there's, there's a video we're doing on me and James. James is actually coming over here. Uh, social we will, distancing, we will, we, we, we will be social distancing and, ma- and masks and PPE will be worn. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so yeah, we're, shoot, we're shooting a video, something like that on, on Friday. Mm. Uh, Jess puts, do you think that running the Bosque Tanner at the verge of breaking up with pedals in front or internal pedals is the way you should go? Interesting. Shall I try it? Yeah, why not? Because we okay. all know that Valve Verge of Breakup sounds gorgeous. Yeah. Does yeah. does emulated Edge of Breakup oh. sound gorgeous? Oh look at look at it. Oh, it's, it's a mess. It's, it's gone messy. I can't. Go. I can't really comment because my place looks like someone's just dropped a cable <laughs> bomb and it's gone off. Oh, that'll be on then. That'll be on. Yeah. There thanks for that. That's okay. Insane. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Apologies. Okay. Coming in your ears. Try- <laughs> okay, let me plug my. I have got. I hope you're qualified. Okay. Yep, I have got. So, this is the sound of the katana. So, I've got my pedal switched off. Okay. Maybe, maybe mute some of those um, the craziness effects. <laughs> Let's go back to. Actually, actually let, let me share my screen. Okay, okay you, let's turn off that, the Univibe. Okay. okay, so there's the sound. Actually, what I'll do is... To, yeah, so there's the sound of all my pedals off going in the front of the katana. Now, one of my favourite pedals, I've done a video on this as well, is a Black Eye Boost, which is, which is an Earthquaker Boost pedal. And it's just a single knob pedal. Let me switch that in. Now, if I t- if if I crank that up full, that's really nice. It's awesome, isn't it's it? It's lovely. So, but depending what amp you plug that into, depending on how much headroom the amp has got, that will drive quite quite hard. So, if I plug that into my divided by thirteen, that sounds like a you know full full on sort of rock sort of sound. Mm-hmm. Okay, now I've got here, I've got a Thorpey Peacekeeper, which is a mid, it's like a, it's a bit like a, a tube screamer. Let's, let's try, so this is plugged, the Thorpey Peacekeeper straight into the katana. Ah. Okay, so the katana takes pedals so well. Put your put your so, camera back on so we can see you. Hold up. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that was stupid, wasn't it? What did I do that for? I, I don't. Know. Okay. So yes, the the katana and pedals sounds sounds great so using the real pedals does actually make a difference some of them are actually better than the emulated pedals that the you know that are in the katana um i hope that answers the question um okay 
Harish Pamu says, why does BTS have three different EQs? One on the panel, next one to the noise noise suppressor, and one by the FX mod slot. Also the cat the cat bottom heavy or treble heavy. Is also oh, is the katana bottom heavy or treble heavy? Hmm. I, I think it's quite balanced to be honest to to answer that question. I wouldn't say it's bottom heavy or treble heavy. It sounds fairly flat to me when I've heard. The yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty yeah. flat. I think. Yeah, they've done a good job. Uh, three different. Okay, different EQs at different points. I guess because if you want to, if you're getting frequencies that are building up, I'm trying to do this so it's not so technical. Um, think of them as. Think of them as cleaning, clean up EQ. So if if you've got a a parametric EQ that comes after the amp, and it, just say you get like a a bass build up, you can remove that bass build up. Don't think of it. Don't think of them as you've got to use them because you know do not use the EQ if you don't need it. Use the EQ like you would on a on a regular amplifier. So you've got your bass, middle, and treble on the front panel of the katana. Just use that. If you're not getting what you want out of it, say like you get this big sort of bass thump on it, then you can reduce the bass thump by using the EQs. Think of it as creative EQ, as in the ones that you would normally have on the front of your amp, and then corrective yep. EQ with parametrics and all that sort of and, and graphics and stuff on the other end. Yes, I know you can use yep. graphics as like a boost pedal, or, or, you know, and I know that's totally legitimate, but think in this case, the normal amp EQ is your amp controls and then everything else is, is kind of corrective stroke taming problems yeah but yeah brilliant yeah th you answered that so much better than i did well you know uh, what's your thoughts on the artist is it worth upgrading from the mark 250 so the artist has a different speaker in it um and you, i think you've got more control on the front of the amp um is it worth it i haven't tried one i would probably say no but you should, you know, go and try one out and take your, take your Mark II 50. I think the Mark II 50. The, the only thing about the 50 watt one is it's quite limited in some of the things you can do with it. I think there's some of the outputs and on the back of the amp aren't aren't on the 50 that are on the 100. So I think you probably get more out of the 50 to the 100, and there's not a massive price increase. So hmm. interesting. Uh, okay, um, I have a Muir G. A Mua GE three hundred. I don't know that one, but I think that's is that the one that Brent reviewed recently. If that is, that sounded really good. Um, Matt, hi Matt again. Uh, James, have you compared your Chandler amp to the UAD plugin? Yes, I have. And the reason I bought the real thing is because way back when the GAV nineteen T UAD version came out, I reviewed it for Production Expert, loved it, thought I wanted to try the real thing and then fell in love with the real thing even more. So I did it the wrong way around almost. I, I loved the plug-in and went, this is amazing, I want this. Because say, to me, it is, it's that mid-range amp that Paul really likes. It's the kind of voxy, selmery, mm -hmm. break-up-y, fender-y yeah. kind of crunchy loveliness. It is not, it will do filthy and it does it really well. But when you start doing <laughs> that inside the amp, it doesn't play nicely with pedals. It really doesn't, which is why I bought, bought the Rev, because I, I wanted a, a really good, flat-sounding pedal platform. Yeah, and the, the Rev great, sounds great for that. Uh, Dinser Ints says, we should buy a better internet connection rather than coffee. Well, that's not our fault, unfortunately. What we're doing is something that YouTube, this live tube thing, isn't actually supposed to do. So James is controlling the YouTube. The YouTube. I can't believe I called all it. All of the, the YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> James is controlling all of the YouTube. And then I'm I'm basically on a Skype call with James. And James is then, through the clever the cleverness of James's... Cleverness. Ge geekery. <laughs> he's, he's managing to get this into YouTube. Now, now what so, makes it actually, I think, more clever... Is the yep. fact that you're not you're not hearing Paul's Skype because if you were hearing Paul over Skype, you wouldn't be getting all the nuances and niceness of the guitar tone. You're actually hearing Paul through an amazing plugin called uh, Listen To by Audio Movers. 
into my Pro Tools, into my other Pro Tools system, running through the console into another interface back into here. So, yes, it ain't ideal, but we thought that in the grand scheme of things, this being about audio and studios and stuff, the audio quality was more important than having Paul moving smoothly in a a beautiful way. Now, we all know Paul is not a robot and he doesn't move at 16-bit or 8-bit because um, it does look a bit like you're kind of sta stugger <laughs> staggering your way across the screen at times. But um, we thought the audio quality was more important than the, than the pictures. So sorry yeah. about that. We made that Absolutely. call. Hopefully you think it's the right one too. Blame, yeah, blame YouTube. Uh, hello from Torquay. Oh, hey. mate, lucky. Yeah. Nice. Uh, am I the only one right seeing now. a lot of lag? Yes, we've just answered that question, Jake. And Jake's got another question. I'm having issues finding a tone I really like with P90s. My other guitars, I push my other guitars, I push the mids. But the P90s, I feel I have to pull the mids out. Absolutely. A P90 is more mids. Yeah. Uh, to get anywhere decent. Any tips? Yeah, exactly. Exactly as you're doing. Um, remove the mids. Now, this is, a, this is a point where it's worth using the EQ plugins. The, the EQ the different EQs inside the Katana. So you get a choice of having it preamp or post amp, so before the amplifier or after the amplifier. So now if you go preamp, so that's before the amplifier, you can really shape the tone of your guitar going into the the front of the amp. So then you can start to remove those mid frequencies that P90s are known for. Some amps work really well with P90s. And some amps don't. The Chandler does. It sounds amazing. Does it? A mate of mine brought a Les Paul Junior round with P90s, and it sounded right. amazing. I just went, you know, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes P90s can sound great. I mean, I've got I've got a Friedman with P90s. Works great on some amps, not so well on other amps. Um. Okay. Next question. Any recommendations for recording via USB? Some say the input needs boosting. Yeah, um, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Me and James can talk about 24-bit and 32-bit float and all that sort of stuff. As long as you're recording into your DAW at minimum 24-bit, you're all fine, mate. So just don't worry about level so much. I'm assuming that, depending on the DAW you're using, it the Katana wants to be the interface like the 11 rack used to want to be when you were using it as the usb connected thing or can you just so, 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 can so, you so, sorry james say that again so w w when i'm using the 11 rack it is yep. a standalone piece of hardware i'm not using it in its audio interface mode so hence when yep. i when, when i'm using the the audio from the 11 rack it has to run through stereo pair into the console to get into pro tools i can't use my interface and the 11 rack at the same time. I probably could if I could be faffed to build a um, an aggregate device setup, but I really can't. Then you end up in. The, but the Katana can be your audio interface, can't it? It yes, can it be can. your USB audio interface, and that's how you do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you are recording the Katana and you are using an, an alternative audio interface, you know, there are a billion out there Focusrite, Antelope, uh, any, any, you know, there, there are millions of them. Yeah, you are going to be using a stereo pair. I, 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 is there a stereo output on the back, like a stereo? No. There isn't. No, it's not. No. Hmm. The, the the USB. I mean, I can't understand why they didn't. There's even a headphone out, and that's not stereo. There's yeah, the USB stereo, hmm. but the 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 audio outputs are not stereo. Weird. Okay, that is odd. It is a bit odd. Oh well. It is a bit odd. I don't know. I don't know why they did that. Um. I was going to say something. Um, now, again, I'm not trying to plug the patches that I've done. I've never had a problem with levels going into my DAW. So just um, d download those patches, or or if you don't want to download the patches, go and have a look at some of the other videos, copy the settings, and then try that. Try that in your DAW and see if it's any louder, because I never have any problem with volume, with volume coming out of the USB. Um... How do I get a 12-string effect on the cat? Go through a Bowie phase. Oh, do you know what? I really don't like those 12-string emulation type plug-in things. They always feel a bit weird to me and sound a bit weird. I don't know, but I'll have a look. I'll uh, have a look. There is a, a good way of doing it. What's that? 
By well, a twelve string. Well, no, uh, there's an easier way of doing it as well. Go on. You buy a set of twelve string string twelve string guitar strings. Oh, okay. Yeah. You do a recording pass with your normal six, E A D G B E. What you then do is restring it with all the other strings from the twelve string set. It's what's it's, refer- Nashville it's what's referred to as Nashville tuning. Um yeah. and then and I do it acoustics, it sounds fantastic. A I don't have a twelve string. I would like one. Uh, it's on my list. But you can then do really cool things. You can have the tw- you can have the two sets of a 12 string panned hard left and right yeah which is a really interesting kind of sound it's really really good nice, fun yeah um yeah yeah that's really good and it's going to cost you you know a set of strings a fiver i don't, I don't even know how much strings are these days i buy them in packs oh, a of bit a, more a, than mi- that now. a million there used to be a, there used to be a fiver in our day mate yeah thanks <laughs> <laughs> theo onion says the boost sounded lovely what was the name again please it was the earthquake devices black eye boost they don't make them anymore get them second hand if if you see one well if i see one before you do i'll buy it again the plumes is a good one though isn't it the the, plumes is good plumes is a great i've got um, yeah plumes is really good but plumes is, is slightly different plumes is a centaur a treble booster and a tube screamer in one pedal that sounds more, more of a drive that sounds yeah, more, more of an versatile overdrive. to me <laughs> yeah, but you can't get that. This is like um, if um, if anyone knows who the guitar nerds are, you should. If you don't, you should. Um, they call them make gooderers. Make which make, is a make, great name. There's a great there's a great pedal by oh who's that company that make really good power supplies? Voodoo Labs. Oh yeah, there's an amazing pedal called the Giggity or Giggity or. You know, ah. they would probably call it the no gig- diggity, the giggity, because they're American right. and, and I'm not. Um, check. I will, I'll, I'm going to try and get one because I remember James. It's in fact it was James Santiago who is now at UA and is looking after all things guitar. Oh yeah, yeah. UA. Uh, he was at Voodoo Labs when he showed me this pedal, and it was basically a really cool way of being able to make in. A strat sound like a Les Paul, or a Les Paul st- sound like a strat by going from one end or t'other of this particular process. And I went, oh, right. "That's amazing!" But it also was a booster, just just enough to give to give you that little bit of extra grunt, that little bit of extra kick into an amp. And I thought, "Oh, awesome! I've got to try one of those." Say, so, so the Giggity pedal, Giggity Giggity, by Voodoo, Voodoo Labs, amazing pedal. Oh, I'll have a look at that. Yeah, that sounds that sounds awesome. Well, we're we're done an hour already, so wow. uh, that's gone quick. Yeah, um, Shanthal Perea, excuse me again if I'm if I'm pronouncing this wrong. Planning on eventually getting a katana. I know the hundred has more functionality, but I'll probably play at home and get mic'd on stage or use someone else's amp. Should I stick with the katana fifty? Um, depends on your budget. To be honest, I think if you can afford the hundred, get the hundred. I don't think you'll be d- uh, disappointed. Um, the 50 is great, but the 100 is, it has got, yeah, it is slightly more versatile. And for me, I always do that. I always, I hate sort of buying something and then going, oh, I've got to buy the other thing because you end up spending more money, don't you? Mm-hmm. Um, okay, yes. And Paul Fiero says, I wish I bought the 100. I have the 50 and would love the GAFC. Yes, I couldn't agree more. Thanks, guys. I'll look up the EQ, some more good. Uh, Paul again awesome thanks guys I'll be using the Katana as the USB interface I used to have the Boss GT1 and that was great thanks for your help really appreciate it anytime um, Jeffrey as an artist Mark II owner if you have a mini controller already which you know, such as the FCB 1010 artist has the MIDI in which saves you from getting Boss's effort excellent yeah that's a good point mm-hmm. it's got MIDI on it Will Bryant says, the EQ on the Boss Tone Studio is the biggest key I've found for dialing an excellent tone. You can get a good tone just off the panel, but the EQs are the key for me. Excellent. Yeah. I completely agree. Uh, I bought a cheap acoustic secondhand and strung it in Nashville style. Yes. That's yep. right, Phil. And I, and great I can great even, way of doing it. I can even actually show you. I didn't even actually. Oh, go on, go on. Play us a bit. Yeah, right. show us something the Nashville sound. It does right. sound nice. Before I, before I, I'm going to just, hang on. I'm somewhat tethered down because of, I mean, cabling and stuff so this is actually not my guitar i'm about to pick up it's my wife's guitar um, I'll, I'll play some music james something appropriate for james yeehaw 
When I go window cleaning. <laughs> right, so um, this is my, it's, believe it or not, it's my wife's Fender acoustic. All right, yeah. From when she were a wee, a wee youngin. Oh. So, oh, that so cool. that's a G chord. Sounds great, doesn't it? It's got a really lovely kind of, and it doesn't matter if you put it on a cheap on on a cheap acoustic. No. It doesn't matter. It's a, such a great sound. It's just, I mean, you've got the thing you have to worry and or worry about, and obviously I, I haven't right now. Is it's got to be bang on in tune, otherwise you get really weird beating. But that kind of, yeah. It's a great yeah, sound. Yes, it's lovely in the mix as well. It's a great yeah, noise. It's great. And you can do that whole kind of hard left, hard right thing, which is great fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Excellent. Okay, the additions of the Mark II artists are well worth the investment. Now you have a stackable effect type. So my current rig is two stereo guitar artists. And that's it. That's great. Oh, that's a great setup. Jason Clark says, great advice all around, guys. Thanks from... Go is that Now, G-A-L-W-A-Y. That's Galway, isn't it? Yes. I think so. Yes, Galway yeah, Island, in, lovely, yeah, nice. In Ireland, yes, beautiful part of the world. Yes, the Amer um, Americans would probably pronounce that Galway. Yeah. Matt, hi James, are you tired of the Sphere L22 as an overhead mic on drums? Um, I oh, ha are you? Am I you? Oh, okay, I think, have you, tr okay. have you tried? Yes, Sorry. I have tried it. I, I tried it way back when I first got my grubby mitts on a Sphere. You can do, because you can move the... Um, polar pattern of yeah. the two mic, the two virtual microphones independently. You can do MS in one mic, which is really cool. You oh, can awesome. do, um, you can say, so for example, if you if you want two C12s, which let's face it, no one in the real world can afford, you can have them back to back across the in in Sphere 180 mode. This is the important bit, and oh, you can okay. and you can then move. The center of the polar patterns down, so you can actually have a really nice kind of coincident pair of ridiculously expensive mics. Do no. I still do that? No, I don't, <laughs> because I just don't. Um, the Sphere is a great, great, great microphone. I would like another one, um, but I don't have another one. I've, I'm using the um, uh, what is it? It's the what are they called? Hang on, uh, Vanguard Audio Labs V44S, their stereo microphone, which has got a mo two, two multi-pattern capsules that can be moved. Um, or I'm using the Antelope Audio Edge Quadro, which is four capsules in a huge. It, it looks it lo looks like a tank shell. It's an enormous great thing. <laughs> but very very Excellent. cool and very very versatile. I I like mo mic modeling a lot. I love the the whole the idea of mic modeling. Whether you think the models sound like the real thing, I don't care. I like the variation and and the fact that the variation isn't wrecking the sound. Um, back back when, do you remember? Um, was it called the Liquid Channel? Focusrite did the, the, yeah, the, I had the, one of those. Yeah. I had I have one. And the idea of Rubbish. it was, was that it could do loads of different mic preamp sounds and different compression sounds and different mic mic sounds. Nah. It was rubbish. It, 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 it broke rubbish. more than it fixed. <laughs> Absolutely. Whereas now, yeah. mic modeling is so good and preamp and all that, and you know, the whole digital signal chain modeled is so, so good. Even if you don't like the, I'm trying to think, find a microphone that does it um even if you don't like the sound of the mic itself which i would normally be surprised about um i remember doing a, a recording for paul for a, a rats track and it being me just sending you the naked kind of normal unprocessed mics and you went these mics sound great i said yeah they're the antelope um yeah, verge mics the small, small they're diaphragm good. condensers they're really good um but then you put the models on and you go oh now that goes up a game 
up, yeah. up a level. So I agree. Mic modeling is good. Uh, and it should be embraced whether it's the slate system whether it's the antelope whether it's um the townsend labs i don't care mic modeling is good you should in- endorse it and get into it yeah absolutely absolutely um okay so just before we do the last question um again i'm gonna do a little plug for the preset pack that i've just done if you guys want to download the presets you can do i'll tell you what i'll do once all this is processed because youtube takes a bit of time to process this i'll do the notes and i'll put the link in the notes um uh, and also if you want to buy james or myself a coffee you can do i'll put the uh buy us a coffee and i'll uh i'll um yeah let me know if it's for james or for me or Don't both of us even, he doesn't yeah. he doesn't even like coffee <laughs> how, how very dare you i love coffee i love good i love good I coffee i'm not in this starbucks oh, yeah. malarkey absolutely absolutely um so yes so if you want to download the presets you can do um i'll, I'll put the link Tomorrow I'll, I'll upload the link to it, but it's on our website, which is the studiorats.net. Um, okay, just last couple of questions. Is the GAFC pedal the only one that will work with the Katana? Um, as far as I know, yes, unless you've got the artist, which has got MIDI. Uh, Dean says, hey guys, hi from Toronto. Hey, how you doing? Just want to say love your channel and all your tutorial videos. It's a pleasure, Dean. I'm glad you, I'm glad you like them. Um, and that's, uh, Paul says, Paul Fero says, there's a four button foot switch made by a company called Bright Onion. Ah, yes, Bright Onion. Mm. I think they're based in, in Brighton that works on the 50, but I prefer the layout of the JFC. That's interesting. Oh, that's a good, that's, that's a good tip. Nice one, Paul. Uh, I was reminded the other day, someone said to me, you know, uh, you know, I mentioned a, um, speaker cabinet manufacturer that based down in yes. Brighton, Bareface yep. Audio. That's it. Is yeah. the company? Um, they do some amazing little cabinets that sound that are supposed to sound sound absolutely off the off the planet. They sound incredible. So yeah, um, I saw the Rob Chapman yes. yeah, the Rob Chapman review of it. Are we, yeah, it sound, do we, are we still allowed to talk about Rob Chapman? <laughs> I think I think he's back in I think he's back in business again. Back in favour. He's back in favour again. Yeah, so it's um, all right. But no, I I watched that video and went, I must get one of those. Because I think that's going to mic up so well, especially, yeah. especially with room mics as well. I bet you're going to get an amazing room mic sound out of that thing. Well, well, by the sounds of it, you don't even need to worry about micing it up well. You just you can, you can stick a microphone anywhere and it sounds the same. It's an incredible thing. Mm. Very, very. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. I'll have to try anyway, to get older on one of those. Yes, yeah, you should actually. You should, you should. So it's been, it's been good. It's been, it's been fun, and we've actually had the most amount of watchers live that we've yes, had. Yes, I think we have. Which has been we great. We got up that's to been, forty-eight really nice. or so at one point, I think, which is fantastic. No, there's this fifty. No, it's been fifty oh, over fifty. In that, in that case, I didn't see that point. Thanks, Mum, for yeah, joining so. for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all your family there. Um, so thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us. If you have any requests of live Q and A's that you'd like us to do, just to give you a heads up as well, um, we had a question during the week about the Synergy amp set up the oh yeah got. uh i've in, had had a little dig around in my little black book of contacts and it turns out that we have friends at synergy which is Woo-hoo! good so i'm going to work to get some more modules over to you for that kind of and we can have a play through that that's another really exciting um development i think in the whole kind of guitar amp thing modular guitar amps i mean um i think there was a few years ago when uh, at now if someone said to me what was this year's now about? I would have said 500 series modules and AAX plugins, because yeah. everyone and their auntie was doing an AAX version of their their whatever. And I yeah. think now, um, more and more amp manufacturers are licensing their their amp designs to Synergy um, to yeah. make Synergy versions of their amp. Uh, yeah. Don't get me wrong. I want the Steve Vai one because I love that sound. I, I also would like the <laughs> Bogner one. I'd love to try the SLO 100, the Soldano one, see how close it is to the real thing. So. We'll no, I, I had the Soldano one. Yes, it was, yeah. It sounds like a Soldano. It's like, we'll, you know. We'll work on that. <laughs> yeah, excellent. So, yes, thanks, guys. Um, yeah, yeah, you, you know, thanks for joining us and uh, we'll see you next week. We'll see you next hopefully. week. Same time, same place. Night, night. Cheers, guys.